welcome back friends in our lecture number 9 in our 9th lecture of enzyme mechanism in part 1st of 9th lecture we have studied about ribonuclease a which are famous for breakdown of rna by breaking phosphodiester bond in our part 2nd we are going to study another example that is lysozymes which are famous for breakdown of bacterial cell wall by breaking glycosidic bond this is the difference between these two enzymes so today we are going to study in detail about steps which are involved in lysozyme enzymatic action but before that please don't get confused between lysosome and lysozymes lysosomes are an organelles which are present in eukaryotic cell whereas lysozymes are an enzymes which are generally present in our tears or milk in our saliva as well as in egg white also these enzymes shows action upon especially bacterial cell wall for these enzymes bacterial cell wall is a substrate the name lysozyme which is also known as muramidase so what this muramidase tells us is that ase indicates the enzyme name and muramide is nothing but the substrate for that enzyme lysozyme is common and famous name which is given to this enzyme so after looking at their name description let's see what these enzymes do so it is important to know about the substrate as we have said the enzyme acts upon the bacterial cell wall which is composed of peptidoglycan in plant cells we will find cell wall is made up of cellulose in fungi the cell wall is made up of chitin in case of bacteria the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan please notice that in all these three cases the cell wall is made up of carbohydrates means nothing but the sugar molecules are present in them we are interested in peptidoglycan case here which shows the sugar molecules as indicated here are connected by the oxygen between them so the sugar molecules are interconnected by these glycosidic bonds so little homework for you that tell me how ester bonds are different from glycosidic bond as both bond shows oxygen involvement it will take only 5 minutes for you to find out the answer and don't forget to answer in comment section okay this is what we have in front of us that sugar molecules are interconnected by glycosidic bond we need to know about speciality of the sugar molecules first please note down the sugar molecules are not simple instead they are modified sugar molecules as i have mentioned here the sugar molecules are named as nag and nam which are interconnected by glycosidic bond again nam is connected to the nag by glycosidic bond and so on nag nam nag nam are repeated units are present in bacterial cell wall which is peptidoglycan we will study in detail about structural differences of nag and nam in our upcoming lectures on carbohydrate section so don't worry about that here it is sufficient to know that peptidoglycan is made up of nag and nam repeated units in this lecture you need to remember that lysozymes are enzymes who breaks bacterial cell wall which is nothing but a peptidoglycan and we know the composition of peptidoglycan is a repeated unit of nag and nam which are interconnected by glycosidic bonds present between them and this glycosidic bond is target of lysozyme enzyme so on this basic information we have now understood that what lysozyme do now it's time to see how lysozymes are capable of doing this type of reactions means breaking of glycosidic bonds okay for that we need to know about active site of lysozyme because this is the area where substrate is going to bind to that enzyme we know lysozyme is a protein which is made up of 
129 amino acids only out of them only two amino acids perform important role namely glutamic acid 35 and aspartic acid 52 which are very important means what we have lysozyme which is in 3d shape which is nothing but a tertiary structure and after unfolding of this lysozyme 3d protein we will get a primary structure which is nothing but chain of amino acid and by counting amino acid one by one from n terminus we will reach up to the 35th position we will find there is a glutamic acid present and on the location of 52 amino acid you will find aspartic acid is present as shown here in primary structure but after proper protein folding takes place these amino acids comes at the perfect location of active site and capable of doing their role. So this active site get designed in such a way that it occupies three pairs of NAGNAM units. Means the active site of lysozyme occupies hexasaccharide unit of cell wall of bacteria. So it will look like this. This is an enzyme which has an active site in which you will see three pairs nagnam it is one pair again nagnam and again nagnam so total six sugar molecules are present in active site that's why six means hexa and sugar molecules means saccharide units hexasaccharides we can name them as a b c d e f okay now we have our substrate in active site now it's time to perform actual catalysis but notice that the catalysis takes place on the bond between D and E means what the bond between NAM and NAG get cleaved by lysozyme enzymatic action. So remember bond between fourth and fifth sugar molecule is going to break and not between any other sugar molecules. Please note down this because questions are based on these types of informations. So actual lysozyme enzymatic action shows two steps. Here in step number one, the active site which contain glutamic acid, which is an acidic in nature, transfer its proton upon the oxygen which is present between d and e sugar molecule means fourth and fifth sugar molecule by doing so what will happen is that the bond between c1 and oxygen get broken or get cleaved and result into the generation of oxonium ion at c1 carbon of d sugar molecule generally in chemistry sugar molecule exhibits two conformation chair and boat conformation chair conformation is more stable as compared to the boat conformation but due to the formation of oxonium ion the half chair conformation produced and which is sort of unstable structure in step second we will find the stabilization of oxonium ion takes place by the help of aspartic acid 52 the oxonium ion of C1 carbon of D sugar which is a NAM sugar contain positive charge and aspartic acid 52 is in negative state so naturally the aspartic acid 52 and oxonium ion shows charge charge interaction so please notice that no covalent bond formation has taken place here actually this study comes under in SN2 mechanism just remember this in step 1 and step 2 we have seen the glutamic acid 35 lost its proton and aspartic acid 52 is engaged with oxonium ion now the water molecule comes into the picture where glutamic acid 35 who had lost its proton gets its proton back from H2O molecule and the hydroxyl ion which is left behind will interact with that oxonium ion and again aspartic acid 52 come back to its original state so now job is done the key point 
here is that the glycosidic bond has been broken by water involvement. That's why it is also known as hydrolysis type of reaction. The key points need to remember are the bond between fourth and fifth sugar molecule means D and E sugar molecule is going to break by this method. This method comes under the general acid catalysis type of reaction. And we are getting our enzyme back from where it had entered into the reaction. So please remember all these steps in order to understand the glycoside enzymatic action. So in ninth lecture in part 1 and part 2 we discussed how enzyme perform their catalytic function by showing the example of catabolism of RNA molecule in part 1st by ribonuclease A and catabolism of glycosidic bond in peptidoglycans of bacterial cell wall in part 2nd by lysozyme enzymes. I hope you must have understood how these enzymes perform their role and come back to their original form so they can again catalyze the new reaction. So in this way we have completed this ninth lecture. I request you to please subscribe this channel and click on the bell icon so you will get a notification about new lectures. Thank you for watching this video. We will meet in our 10th lecture. Take care.